What heart could hold the weight of your love And know the heights of your great worth What eyes could look on your glorious face Shining like the sun You are holy, holy, holy God most high and God most worthy You are holy, holy, holy Jesus, you are Jesus, you are Your name alone has power to raise us Your light will shine when all else fades Our eyes will look on your glorious face shining like the sun who is like you God you are holy 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 God most high and God most worthy you Welcome to another encounter here at Imseni on a Sunday night, friends. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it, and I really hope you're getting as much out of these sessions as I am in the recording and prepping for them. Uh, I hope that you're being blessed by them, and I'd so appreciate it if you would like the video, share it, perhaps with somebody else, get the word out there a little bit, uh, maybe subscribe to our channel, and really, I'd love if you could say hello in the comments, just so we can connect, rather than it just being a a consuming thing. Let's connect and get to know each other a little bit better by doing that. Now, if you've joined before, you'll know that we're going through Anne Spangler's book, Praying the Attributes of God, which is guiding us through these sessions so far. And today we're skipping ahead towards the back of the book, where we're going to look at the fact that God is holy, or as she says, God is better than anyone you know. Here's how she starts the chapter in the book. What does holiness mean? It means that everything about God is infinitely better than the best thing you know about anyone else. (laughs) I like that. His holiness encompasses his absolute purity and goodness. If you had to choose one word 
to describe God, what would it be? I'm sure many of you would use some of the words that we've done in previous sessions. God is love. God is good. A few weeks ago, we did God is infinite. Last week, we did God is close. But perhaps, in fact, definitely, the word holy is the best one to choose to describe God because all these other things are part of his holiness. In fact, R.C. Sproul is one of the great Reformed teachers and preachers of our time. He taught a lot about this. One of his sermons, I remember him saying this, There is only one characteristic of God that is spoken about with repetition. So in biblical times, to emphasize something when you were writing, you, you had to repeat it. Today we've got bold, we've got underlined, we've got italics, we've got different colors and all of that on word processes. But in those days, you had to repeat something to emphasize it. And so in the Bible, we often see things repeated, like Jesus would say, truly, truly, I say unto you. And then you knew he, he was going to say something important. There's only one attribute of God that is repeated to the third degree in Scripture. The Bible doesn't say that God is love, 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 or that God is good, 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 as much as he is those things. But the Bible in a few places says this, that God is holy, 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 as we've just sung. So let's read from Revelation. This is a fantastic vision that John has of heaven. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like an ox, the third had the face of a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. And then here comes the verse, day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Think of that. Heaven is worshiping God day and night without ceasing. And what are they celebrating about God? His holiness. The fact that he is holy, holy, holy. So what does that mean? I like John Piper's definition. He says, God's holiness is his infinite value as the absolutely unique, morally perfect, permanent person that he is. Think about that. Infinite value. More valuable than anything else on the earth. Absolutely unique. Completely separate and incomparable. Morally perfect. Utterly without fault or evil. Permanent. Never ending. Why do we worship God, friends? It's because he is holy. Not just because he loves us. Although that's a wonderful truth that we cherish. But... We worship him because he is who he is. And so will you join me and sing this song? And let's join in those creatures in heaven that are circling the throne and singing those words. And let's sing those same words with them now. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing Praise to the King of Kings You are my everything And I will adore you of lightning, roads of thunder, 
Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Is. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you So friends, come, let's pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we come into your presence now. We come acknowledging, celebrating, worshipping you because you are holy. You are so many things, Lord. But above all, you are holy, 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 and we come to declare it and to celebrate it now. Holiness is the essence of who you are, Lord, so we come bowing down. We come in great reverence, in awe, in front of you, Lord. We know that you have no equal. We know, Lord, that there is none like you, not in the heavens, not here on earth. You are utterly wonderful, utterly perfect. You are absolutely without measure, Lord. And we come to celebrate the splendor of your holiness. Father, we pray that your spirit would be poured out onto us as we encounter you in this time. We pray, Lord, that the weight of your glory will fall into each home, into the heart of each person watching and listening now. Let us know in this time that you are pure, that you are perfect, that you are holy, holy, holy. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. So let's read the other scripture which contains this phrase, holy, holy, holy. Isaiah chapter 6, we read this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seating on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. The temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Notice what happened here. Isaiah saw God's holiness. He saw just a glimpse of God's holiness. What did he do? He fell on his face. He cried out in anguish because in the presence of holiness, true holiness, none can stand. In the presence of holiness, you know what happens? We start to see just how unclean our lives are. I had the great privilege of hearing my uncle, my great uncle, Koki, preach the other day. And this was what he was preaching about. He was talking about how when we reach heaven one day, we're not going to skip in there and start asking God questions, but we're going to be so overawed at the splendor of his holiness that we're going to fall as if dead on our knees in wonder. So Isaiah just caught a glimpse of God's holiness. The, the bottom of his robe filled the temple, and it was so overwhelming for him and he fell over and did you see what he said he said woe is me i'm ruined i'm an unclean man i'm a man of unclean lips he said and the same thing happened to peter when peter saw jesus and realized who he was and how utterly amazing he was you know what he said he said go away from me lord for i am a sinful man this is what happens when we encounter God in his holiness. It's always a convicting effect. That's why the Holy Spirit is the great convictor. Whenever we're filled with the Spirit, we're convicted of our sins because that's the very nature of anything holy. It shines onto darkness so that it can be swept away. So think about Isaiah. He'd been a preacher. He'd just spent five chapters of this book preaching all sorts of great godly stuff, and yet even he, even he who was obviously committed to God, said, I'm unclean. I'm a man of unclean lips. When his eyes saw holy, he realized that he needed to confess. So, as we sing this next song, friends, let it be a time of confession for us. We've just sung two songs saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, and just celebrating how good he is. Now, let's confess that when our eyes see holy, we also see our own unclean selves. Am I unfit for you? Remember me the one who turned from you I come in ranks Tattered by the fallen All the earth A witness to my crime Mercy Weep over me Let your tears Wash me Majesty, be merciful with me, for my eyes have seen holy. Hear my prayer at night. Let the morning find me. For I am tired and weakened by the fall and all the earth bear witness to my cry. Mercy, weep over me, let your tears wash me. with me for my eyes have seen holy
see holy we have to cry mercy mercy lord please cleanse me my eyes have seen holy be merciful to me lord so what hope then do we have friends if we are so far gone that we need to just fall on our knees in the presence of holiness what on earth is going to set us free from this well the good news is that something has And that was the death of Jesus on the cross. That is our hope. It gives us hope for two main reasons. And I want you to take these with you as you go. Firstly, it gives us hope because it brought us forgiveness, which we didn't deserve. God is holy. We are sinful. And so we don't deserve to enter into his presence. But when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was split in two. That has tremendous significance because the curtain in the temple was supposed to keep unholy people out of the holy place. And when Jesus died, that was, that was done. And now even unholy people like you and I can come into God's presence by grace. And in his presence, his grace is forgiveness. In his presence is the ability to be cleansed, In his hands is love. And so, yes, he's holy, friends, but if we have our faith in Jesus, if we by faith accept what he did for us on the cross, then instead of God holding that uncleanness against us, he placed the punishment on Christ, and you and I go free. Amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today that our our sins and our stains can be washed away so that God doesn't kick us out of his holy presence. But the second bit of good news, the second bit of hope for us today is that the cross broke the power of sin in our lives. Listen to what Peter, that same Peter who all those years earlier had said, go away from me, Lord, for I'm so sinful. Listen to what he said later in his life. He said, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. That was that old Peter. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And so the same man who before was caught up in sin and uncleanness, now said to the people, be clean, be holy. Because God is holy, be holy too. Live pure lives. How could he say such a thing, right? Do you know why? He could say it because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember what happened to Peter at Pentecost? His life was changed forever. He was filled with the Spirit. And with the Spirit came the power to live a holy life. In fact, the New Testament says it often. Romans 1 verse 7, Paul says, To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. If Paul had to write a message to your church today, he would probably use the same phrase, called to be holy people. 
1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7. God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. I could read so many of these, but I'm going to cap it there. The Bible is always telling us to live holy lives. And we can't do it by ourselves. We can only do it through the Holy Spirit's empowering. Anne Spangler says it this way in the book that we're reading. She said, as Christ's followers, we are transformed rather than destroyed by God's power. Because Jesus made it safe for us to come into the presence of a holy God who cannot tolerate sin. Christ's own holiness has become our bridge into God's presence. His purity is contagious, spreading to us. As God's holy people, we are called to be different from others in the world around us, dedicated to God and set apart for service. Friends, I want to tell you today that you and I can be holy if we've placed our faith in Christ and if we've been filled by His Holy Spirit. Sure, there's room for growth always, but you and I can be holy as he is holy, as Peter, Paul, and all the writers of the Bible encourage us to be. And so, what's it going to be for you this week? Are you going to hang on to those dirty garments that God has taken off of you? Or are you going to clothe yourself in holiness by by surrendering to his Holy Spirit and doing everything with his help in a pure and holy way. Our friends, let's live stain free. Let's live sin free. Let's live pure lives to his glory. He has done so much for us. And so let's do the same in response. Let's give our lives for him and live them pure and holy. And I hope this song as we close is going to give us the opportunity to make that surrender. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold, refine as fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you. Do your will purify my heart, cleanse me from within, and make me holy. Purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin. Deep within. One desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you. Ready to do your will. So, Father, we go, ready to do your will, filled with your Holy Spirit. Make us holy as you are holy, we pray.